So back in November, uh, GM announced that it would cut roughly about 14,000 jobs and idle five factories in North America. Now, uh, one of those factories included the Lordstown plant in Ohio. Now, uh, that plant employs about 1,600 workers. And uh, now some of those workers are speaking out, yes, both against Trump, but also mostly against the CEO and the company, Mary Barra. Uh, now, I want to give you some quotes here uh, from some of these uh, workers. Now, Danny Adams uh, has worked at the plant since 1996, and he said uh, that the announcement was a complete surprise. He said, it was really a kick in the stomach. It's not woe is me, it's woe is us. And by us, of course, he means the entire uh, town of Lordstown, uh, which, of course, that plant operated as a central hub. Now, Stephanie uh, Alien, I, I'm prob I probably said that wrong, uh, Alien um, said, this is devastating, this is our livelihood, right? Now, she, of course, was working for GM in 2000. She began working uh, for GM in 2000 and had been transferred to uh, Lordstown back in 2010. Now, she actually worked uh, at a, a lot of different plants. She said, this isn't my first rodeo. This is my third GM plant. I'd like to be able to plant my roots somewhere. Uh, now, she had been actually transferred to Lordstown when her GM plant in uh, Louisiana had closed. Uh, and now before Shreveport, she also worked at a GM-owned Delphi auto parts plant in New York, which laid her off in 2006. So she's been around and... It seems like uh, a lot of these workers end up getting shipped off to different places because of closures, etc. And so the reason that I think this is important, that this is actually important to me, is because I used to work in this industry, so I kind of understand how it feels. Um, now, ne not necessarily being shipped off to different plants, but working in that same industry, doing those same kinds of things. Now... When she uh, got transferred to Lordstown, she said uh, she actually had a little bit of hope. She said, there was this feeling that this plant has been around forever and this plant wasn't going anywhere. You felt the security coming here. People bought houses. So again, that, that is something that is one of those things where it's like, you think it's going to be there forever, but you know it's not. And, you know, I know better now, but there was a time that I used to think a similar way. Oh, no, these, these places aren't going anywhere. They're not going to go in it. They've been here forever. What are you talking about? It's a fixture of the city. They're never going to shut this down. Well, it turns out, no, if the money is right, of course they're going to shut it down. And so when you really think about it, there actually is no security. There is no job security, right? Now... The thing about this uh, that is so devastating for these people is that, again, this is the only th uh, place really keeping that town afloat. It's not just a plant, remember. And there's a whole web of industries that it supports. For example, you have the, the part suppliers. Uh, you had some of the local stores that rely on customers who worked at the plant. All of that is interconnected. So then... When the plant goes, when it shuts down or when it idles, um, if they don't actually have another vehicle, of course, to build, then you're going to see a lot of these support industries also crumble. And that is hugely problematic, right? Now, to show you how much that added to this local economy, the plant generated about $250 million in wages just last year. That goes right back into the local economy. And without that gone, Lordstown's in big, big trouble. Now, they could allocate another car there so they don't have to idle it. But as I reported before, they're actually sending um, one of the vehicles, one of the vehicle lines to Mexico. And now I've learned that they're sending a second vehicle line to Mexico. I said before incorrectly that they were shutting down production the cruise they were ending the cruise no they're actually sending the chevrolet cruise down to mexico for it to be assembled there so that was being done at lordstown not anymore now uh, on that upon learning that of course uh Aylin said 
We should be building the next generation of car here in America. We should be building the crossovers here, not in Mexico. So look, the problem is, is that Mexico has incredibly low wages. And here's this company that says, I'm going to save money by cutting labor costs. So that's what they're going to do. Now, the workers are also angry that GM, helped by the tr uh, trillion dollar tax cut enacted by the Republicans and President Trump, has actually used a lot of that money not to create more cars, not to, you know, do more R&D and, and expand their business, but just to step, buy back their own stock. And that's what they did. And see, they spent $14 billion on stock buybacks since 2015. That is not long after the American taxpayer bailed them out. So if you're saying, hey man, look, we, why are you closing down plants when you just got a gigantic tax cut and we bailed you out? What are you doing? What's going on here? And so I can understand why they're so pissed. And you also had the CEO, Mary Barra, uh, making $22 million in compensation last year. Now, the way that a lot of CEOs get compensated is not from cash packages. Actually, a lot of it is tied up in their stock. Well, they're doing gigantic stock buybacks. Well, stock buybacks, if most of your compensation comes through stock and you just do massive buybacks from that tax cut, well, then you're going to end up getting a huge amount of benefit in that. So expect that number to get even bigger. And again, that has people very, very angry. For example, you had uh, Cheryl Janesco, who was laid off in early 2017 when the Lordstown plant cut its third shift. Now she said, quote, they're receiving our taxpayer dollars and investing in these other countries. I don't know how Barra can lay in her bed and sleep at night. Well, I, maybe she sleeps on a pile of money. I don't know. Like Scrooge McDuck. I, I don't know. Um, but look, to be honest, it's not just her. It's the corporate structure. And I'll get into that in a little bit. But Dave Green, president of the UAL, uh, UAW Local one, uh, 111, um, whatever, 1,112. I don't know why that was so difficult for me to say. It's been one of those days. Uh, he said... GM is betraying the American worker, the American taxpayer. He also says, Chevrolet is apple pie. It's an American icon. What disturbs me is GM is going to exit this entry-level segment. If there's no entry-level cars, what are they going to put people in? Are we going to see Toyota, Honda, and Kia gain market share and Joe, a GM throwing in the towel? Yeah, maybe. I mean, look. Here's what they're doing. The, the corporate structure says we must maximize profit. It's Look, to be honest, a lot of these sedans and cars, thanks to Trump relaxing fuel standards, these cars are not as popular as they, want, as, as they were. So people are buying more SUVs. People are buying more trucks, right? Okay, look, I understand that there's a market correction, right? That's going to happen when you do that. Still, uh what they can do is that they can actually invest in making better better trucks, more fuel-efficient trucks, things that people actually want to buy. And I don't think that's what they were doing. What they were doing is basically padding their own pockets. And so that's a big, big problem. Uh, now, going back here to uh, one of the other workers, they said that their uh, GM is making a, mis a strategic mistake by ending U.S. production of the Cruise and several other sedans. Now, it's been reported that they're ending the Chevrolet Impala, the Chevy Volt, and the Buick LaCrosse. Again, because of less sales, right? Now, he said, GM had the perfect opportunity to say, we are the only American car manufacturing company that is building cars in the USA. They could have been like Harley Davidson. They missed it right there because they want their pockets full of money. Well, I got bad news. Harley Davidson also left. I don't know if you got that news. Uh, and look, they left partly due to President Trump's uh, tariffs <laughs> and the price of steel. Hey, remember how he said trade wars are 
great and easy to win? Yeah, about that. Uh, looks like nobody wins in a trade war. Uh, but it's not just Trump, of course. It's the corporate structure. It's corporate green, right? These companies, all they do is they exist to make money. Now, if you end up be getting in the way of that, well, then you're gone. They will crush you. And, and it's nothing personal. Um, going back to what was said, right? Um, the fact that Sh uh, Chevrolet is apple pie. It's an American icon. There is no such thing as an American corporation. It's a multinational corporation, and they have no loyalty to America. They have no loyalty to Lordstown. They have no loyalty to their workers. They have no loyalty to you and me. All they have is a loyalty to maximize profit. That's what that is. That's all they do. Okay? This is the system. And again, it's, not, it's nothing personal. It's how they were designed. Now, if Mary Barra didn't do anything, everything that she could to maximize profit, she would end up getting replaced by the board. It's not the company. It's not the president. It's the system. The entire system is broken. You have a system right now that incentivizes short-term profits that outweigh everything else. Now, there will be no fixing of the system. Because right now, they have the system fixed the way that they want it. Trump's not going to uh, do anything about it. The next president might not do anything about it, depending on who it is. And if it's a, if it's not a progressive, then definitely they're not going to fix that, um, because that very system allows them to be wealthy, and of course it allows so many others to be wealthy too. Why change what makes you rich? And here's the thing: I feel for these people. I really do. Um, I've been in their shoes. I, I've done that kind of work, and. This is why we need progressive priorities. This is why we need to change that system into a system that instead of working for the CEOs and, and the top 1%, have a system that actually works for everybody. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYT Nation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron patreon.com slash tyt nation that goes a long way to help us keep the lights on and you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media